fixing a particular chayt, a particular Indian, there's a there's a there's a moich and there's a consciousness of shuvah which is which is much more inciting, much more fundamental in terms of defining one's place in the world. And I'm not a victim in this place. I'm not being schlepped from one moment to the other moment and just being, you know, uh, being defined by the circumstances around me. I'm being guided by this. I'm being the, the circumstances around me are a simon. Is the being you say that women have? It's a simon of what their body shall wants of me here, but what? I'm, but then I am doing. It's a certain to become a, to become a zaka. That's what we saw from the Golden Gun. Now, based on this, by the way, just to tie up some loose ends, one of the first questions we had when we started with Sugiv Tshuva is that, interestingly enough, in the Ramadan, Tshuva is not counted as a mitzvah. There's no positive mitzvah to do Tshuva when you when a person makes a mistake. What is the mitzvah the Ramadan says? Ramadan says. If the person makes a mistake and they do tshuva, there's a mitzvah to do tshuva in a certain way. To say vidoy and to confess in a certain way. But there's no mitzvah per se, there's no commandment compelling you to do tshuva. And the, the Haranim is, it's a fellow, why not? That should be the more fundamental idea, do tshuva. Uh, yes, there's ways to do it, but the, the more fundamental thing is to do tshuva. Why would tshuva not be the mitzvah? Well, the answer is, based on what we're, what we're saying over here, is that the essence of tshuva is that you're in control, that you're in charge. Tshuva, it, 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 it would be counterintuitive for tshuva to be something that you're commanded to do. Right there, it, 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 the whole end of tshuva is to find your own will and to find your desire and to say that I am the one that's in charge. I am the mashpia. I am going to be the one to conquer this moment and to conquer this territory and to influence the world in the way that the Rebbe Hashem wants me to. to the whole Indian of a mitzvah telling you what to do puts you in a position of being, of being in a kava, of being in a kava. The whole Indian of the tshuva is to be a zohar. The whole Indian of tshuva is to be a zohar. So you can't, the, 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 by its very definition, tshuva cannot be something that you're told to do. Tshuva has to be something that you have to come to on your own. <clears throat> Another question that we had, that is which now we're going to try to answer, is that we saw in the very beginning, a couple weeks ago, that tshuva is always connected to tefillah. And that we spoke about, Shuv and Tzila. But it's also connected to Tzlaka. And we saw in the Rambam, the Rambam said that this lifestyle of Val Tshuva, even if he's doing Tshuva on Lashanara, but the lifestyle of Val Tshuva is that he's involved in Tzlaka. The lifestyle of Val Tshuva is always, he's marred with Tzlaka. So if he's doing Tshuva, you know, over uh, eating non-kosher food, what in the world does that have to do with giving Tzlaka? So take a look at Maramaka number one. So in the cars that you have, so Maramaka number one is a piece from the Kut Maran. It's in Chelek Aleph, Simen, Samach Tes. The Nachno here will give us a better context of what money is and therefore what stuff is and we'll see how it fits with tshuva. Again, just, but just to bear in mind what we said before is that the essence of tshuva in Pinyas is having proper shalom bias and a proper relationship between Zaf and Nekeva. That the Nekeva is certainly there, time is certainly there to guide us and to give us context of what we're supposed to do, but ultimately, the zakhar has to be the mashpia, and you're not just being schlepped along with time and kufa and this and that, because again, like I mentioned last week, time by itself, without the human being coming involved, coming, without the zakhar coming and influencing and bringing light, the moment by itself is chaos and is uh, full of uh, And so, tshuva means the opposite, the opposite of just listening to chagra. Tshuva means, that there's a moment in time which needs tikkun, and I'm being guided by that to figure out what I need to do, but then I do it. And I know what I have to do, and I'm the one that's influencing. It's the side of, Shuv is the side of Vuhu Yim Shobar. That Adon is the Mashpia over the Nekedah. So in that context, take a look at Rav Nachman says. Rav Nachman says, Ki ikar Adam. Where does money come from? Suzanne. Ki ikar hamamin shal Adam, Koloi aidei bazuga. Money, a person money is deeply connected to the neshama of his wife, of his wife. Kal yidei ar nafsha, nafshah, said through the light, the light of a person's wife's neshama, mizeh balay amamim, that's where your finances come from. Hainu, ayidei shemes pashe, yidei shemesnoitzei tzayres in ar nafsha. Obviously, you know, a person's wife has, has her own neshama, but neshamas have a way of spreading and branching off and sparks emanating from it, so to speak. So all the sparks and emanations of a person's, of a, of a woman's neshama are the finances of the home. Elu ha'ayris, him b'chinus ha'mamet, that's money. Ke'amamen yimak ha'nefesh. 
Mamid comes from that place that's called the Nefesh. The Nefesh of the the Cave of Kidu and the word Nefesh is always associated with one's wife, with the feminine quality. A poor person, and, they, and you shouldn't hold on to it when if they need the collateral back. Let's say the person is poor and they only have a blank one blanket. And I take the blanket as collateral because he owes me money. So the Pasi says that you should give the blanket back at night because he needs he needs the blanket in order to live. He nefesh by holding back the collateral, even when he needs it, you're holding back his soul. So you see the Pasi, the Pasi connects the person's possessions with their nisham. Then it's not just their nisham, but really the essence, the essence, the wife's nisham. Basis of Ishtar. He he bechinas ragle. So now Rabbi Nachman explains a little bit the you know sort of the the, the path to it. He bechinas ragle. We know that the wife, in relation to the husband, is we find this in Tanakh and Chazal that the wife is called the feet of the husband, uh, where a person has you know the ability to stand on. That's the, that's the wife. Meshukas with Zayar. Zayar says in Parshas Vayir, ragle chasid of Yishmar. And Hashem protects the feet of his chesidim. Da itza says the Zarkel Shas referring to the wife. So the wife is 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 connected to the feet. Uksiv and it says in Pasa, there's kol hayikum asher baraglein. It says in I think it's Parshas Vayeshe. There's kol hayikum asher baraglein. All of their possessions and all their wealth that was by their feet. Zemaymin shel adam and the Gemara says in Sachem why is the why is money described as being by a person's feet? Because the person's finances establishes them and allows them to stand in the world. So you see these two things. The Zohar Kaddish says a wife is connected to a person's feet. A person has the ability to stand because of his wife. And the Gemara says in that money is connected to a person's feet. Through money, a person is able to stand. And Nachman says these are not a coincidence, two separate Joshua. They're connected to each other. Because in, spirit, in a spiritual sense, the root of money is coming from the Nisham of the wife. Baal Kin Amr of and because of this, the Gemara says in Bamatsiya, I kiru lana shaykhu kehecha de tisasra. The Gemara says in Eitz, a person should give covet to their wife, to respect the wife, to have good shalom bayis, in order that they should become wealthy. Because again, being mechab of the wife and making sure that the wife's nishama is taken care of and so on, that itself is the makar of bracha, that's the makar of a person's parnasa. The kal adam va adam kashu hubalo ailam. And Nachman said, every time a person comes to the world, and this is renewed on Rosh Hashanah, huba in ba zugai, ami yichadis loi. A person in the Shama comes to the world, the male in the Shama comes to the world, and we know that there's a Basco that comes before, right? And who's he, he's going to marry. So every Neshama has his partner. And with that comes a decision of how much money they're going to have. And it's a Sheikh. Now, again, you have to be careful. This doesn't mean that if a person is having uh, difficulty in finances, it means that his wife has a small Neshama, right? It doesn't, it doesn't mean that, because there could be all sorts of Neshamas, all sorts of algorithms in place. To see how much a person has, and in truth, Ezu Asher is a Sameh Vakalka. And the truth is, maybe your wife has a huge neshama, and you're not listening to the Gemara Bamitzia of honoring your wife in order that her neshama should be able to be expressed properly. So there's all sorts of inyana. But what we do, but at the end of the day, so not, it's not necessarily halakha lamais in terms of like how to make business deals, you know. But but halak, but Ramachan is telling us this in it that money is v'chinas nekev. Money is v'chinas nekev. That's why money. <coughs> Money is money is nothing. Money is potent. Money is money. Money is whatever you make it into. Money is the uh, chinas nekeva in terms of in terms of in terms of potential. It, 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 it could become many many things. Just like a wife, so Shem gives birth to children, it could become many many things. But money is the chinas Now, based on that, based on that. The, the, like, like plugging it back into what we said before, every Avera, every Avera ultimately, root, ultimately is rooted in a certain mindset, a certain psychology of a person, which is, I am a victim of my circumstance, I'm a victim of this moment. Every moment brings with it a certain, a certain uh, Messiah, a certain Yitzhar, a certain chaos. And if a person goes into that moment with a victim mentality of, okay, this is, this is my Nazi, this is what it is, then what? Then that's called listening to Chava. That's called listening to Chava. That's called allowing Chava to run the show. And then of course you're going to be dragged into all the chaos that comes, that's existing in that moment. That itself is called Paiva's money. That's called allowing money to rule your life. It's the same thing. Allowing Zman, right? Even, even you know, Haidu uh, Damri uh, Inshi. We find this in Chazal that when there are certain statements that, that the world uses, 
And there's Ashkocha Partis in that. So there's a lotion that the world uses, which is time is money. It's not a shkocha, time is money. The of Zman, which is Nekeva, like we saw from the Roman guy, and money, which is Nekeva, time is money. Time is money. By allowing, by being a victim to time, like we said last time, that every time has a particular mazel and a particular metia that's drawing you to a particular way. If you allow yourself just to be passive in that moment and allow the moment to take you to wherever it wants to go, then automatically it's going to take you to toivoy and to chaos. The job of the neshama, like I said, is to learn, is to, is to have the sensitivity of what is the potential of the moment but then you are dominant and you're in charge and you do what the moment needs. Not what the moment is asking for, but what the moment needs. That's called being a mashpia. That's called having proper influence over the world around you. Victimhood means, uh, it's going to go for the right. I don't believe in my ability of being mashpia. That itself means allowing the cave to rule over the zakha. And that itself means being completely obsessed with money. When money guides a, governs a person's whole life, that's cool. That, that itself is sin. That itself is the maichen. It's the maichen of sin. Allowing zman, which is money, and the keva, to be dominant over the person. And the, instead of me influencing, I am being influenced. That's why in Nachman's writings, we find that one of the biggest hates of ours is time is money. It's time is money. Because it's ultimately, it's not so much there's something wrong with that per se, but it's, it's a certain, it, 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 it it, it feeds into a consciousness of, of being passive and being just a, a victim of circumstance and being completely bound to time and the limitations and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, uh, the, and the, what's, and what this time, what this moment will bring me to without me stepping up and becoming a little bit more in charge of what I think your Banisha wants me to do. Tzedakah, what's Tzedakah? Tzedakah means to be in control over his mind. Tzedakah means to be in control over money. It means I'm not going to allow the money to dictate me. I am showing by a mitzvah, of all the mitzvahs, the one mitzvah that shows how I am not completely at the mercy of money. I am the one that's in charge. I'm going to take my money and give it away. That's Tzedakah. So Tzedakah, therefore, in its, in its essence, is true. It's the same thing as true, which is that instead of allowing Zman to, to guide a person and to dictate what I need to do, I am the one that's going to dictate what this Zman, what this moment demands and what this moment needs for its teacher. I am the influencer, not the influence. That's the, that, and that's the side of Saki. The side of Saki is to have a healthy Shalom Bayez. That's what it means. That's means. So that's why, again, going back, that's why Tshuva, Tzedakah, Tzvila, they're all wrapped together. Now, Fine. Now, one last included that I want to, you know, sort of frame everything we've been talking about is based on the writings of Rav Kook. So, you know, in the last series we, we spoke about, um, you know, moving from like the whole proof of like Thomas and Av. We talked about we talked about the Malchus of Pais so the Shiak and so on. And I mentioned that everything we talked about then is really sort of a pesa into the writings of Rav Kook the flow. Really, everything we've been talking about the past couple of weeks, in a certain sense, is is an afteach, is at least one of the keys to understand tshuva in the writings of Kuk, Ar Tshuva. The Savior that Rav Kuk wrote called Ar Tshuva, The Light of Tshuva, it's not a book that talks about practically how to do tshuva. That you don't need Rav Kuk for. But the writings of in the Ar Tshuva, Rav Kuk talks about what's happening in the nefesh, what's the inner, the inner world of tshuva. And while we've been talking about this Indian of a person sort of recapturing their sense of of Zachos, their sense of being mashpia and not being just a victim of the moment and a victim of time and a victim of circumstances. But Adraba, Uhu Yimshoba. The circumstances define for me what I'm required, what I'm needed for, but ultimately it's about what I'm needed for, and I'm going to be the one to influence. And this is the site of Chuva. We find this is a major Indian in our cook's writings. But to give a little bit of a, of a context, we know that in Swarm there's there's, always, there's something that's called in Islam, tshuva ilah and tshuva tata, higher tshuva and lower tshuva. There's all different ways how to interpret those two, those two relations, those two sides of tshuva. But in the context of what we're saying, I'll see the uh, cook, is like this. Lower tshuva means the type of tshuva that we've been accustomed to, to thinking about growing up, which is, I want to do 
this bad thing, and I'm going to not do that. See, that type of tshuva, which is very pragmatic and very practical, very surface, it's actually the opposite of the type of tshuva that we're talking about, in a certain sense. The, the, the practical tshuva, the lower level tshuva that we're accustomed to thinking is that I have a certain will, I have a certain desire, I want to do something. And the, the ultimate, the, the, and the strategy of lower tshuva is to slash the tires, to deflate one's desire. The less I want, the better. The more, the more passive I am is actually the better. So it, it, in the lower level of tshuva, the objective really is to, I hate to say the words, it's not so nice, but like to sort of give yourself a lobotomy. Like, I, how a I shouldn't even want, and I shouldn't even think, I should just be just like a robot and just go. Like, that would be the ideal. And then I wouldn't have the time for Yetzirah or for this type of Yetzirah and that. I, my ruts and it's my desire and my will and my sense of purpose, my, my power, my, my zahras, that's actually causing me all my problems. So a lower level of tshuva means, well, okay, so then the eighth is to become more of a lemma and not to be uh, such a, a gava and to deflate the tires of your rotsin, right? To take out the, the power of one's rotsin. That type of tshuva, although it might be necessary sometimes and certainly in the beginning of a person's, you know, acceptance of changing one's life, there is sort of a deflating that has to be on one's sense of power, for sure. But ultimately, that's not a healthy tshuva. It's not a healthy tshuva, ultimately. What we're talking about is a description of tshuva law, a higher tshuva. A higher tshuva means not to sacrifice one's power or one's strength, adra, but to put it in proper context and to understand that all of your ruts and all of your desire and all of the things that you want are not there as a hindrance and they're not there as just something to take you to other, the adra, but you are needed. You're, you're, you are, there's, there's, there's purpose in what you're doing. Like I was talking about Shah this morning, right? That the Yad, the brother Yud of El, is like, you, you have a Kaya, you should be Poyal, and you have to be Poyal, and you're here for a reason. And so the higher level of Tshuva, which is not specifically targeted to a particular Yetzirah or a particular Indian, but it's a more of a redefining of one's role in the world. That I am here as a Shlich of the Rabbani Shalom to influence and to conquer territory, right? Miluus arts we keep shul like Hashem said to Adam, go conquer the world. And so that's not specifically targeted to a particular there. That's that's more of a rebuilding of one's rotz. And by doing so, then Adarav, a person then is able to embrace one's one's this, one's one's will even greater than it. And so these are the two levels of tshuva. If tshuva is on the lower level or in its maybe immature stages it actually deflates one's will and deflates one's sense of, of influence in the world. But with time, as a person is able to develop a deeper perspective of what tshuva is and the tshuva process within the neshama, then Adarab, it doesn't deflate one's passions and one's desires and one's sense of purpose. Adarab, it increases that. And what we've been talking about We've been, we've been sort of skipping steps a little bit. We've been talking about that deeper level of tshuva of not specific to Lashonara and Machalas Asuras and this, but just taking a step back and redefining your presence in the world and your place in the world. That you're not here being schlepped along by time. You are sent into the world of time to conquer it and to influence it. And that, 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 that's a, it's a complete shift in terms of, of your place in reality, which then automatically does two things. It automatically builds up a certain confidence and strength that you're not going to fall victim to this particular Yitzhar in this particular moment, in this particular circumstance. And number two, it actually allows you to embrace and, 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 and inflate your, your, your sense of strength and power and influence and your zakas. That's a good thing. Yeah. Not in a way of, of tyranny, but in a way of good thing. Yeah. Does, does, does a tshuva, you need a microphone too. Yeah, no, okay, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Does a tshuva, that we actually need So, if, so, right, so it's a good question. Will tshuva tata, will the lower tshuva naturally lead to tshuva yilah? It can if you're aware of tshuva yilah, right? If the person's not, if the person's not thinking about tshuva, but doesn't know this, then all tshuva means is that lower level tshuva of, of actually slashing the tires of one's will, 
So then, you know, that, that, that's no good. I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'm going to say something, mamish in parentheses, and maybe after the recording we could talk more about Rikhs about it, but we know that before Mashiach comes, there, there has to be tshuva, there has to be a ruch of tshuva that, that, that takes over the whole of that, you know, a sedan, Yisrael, Las is tshuva, the Pai Yisrael, the world is going to do tshuva. But, but, but I think in a, in, in a very subtle, deep way, the world is struggling with this Indian right now. I don't mean the Jewish world, I'm talking about Mamish, the whole, the, the Western world is struggling with this Indian of Shuvah Tato versus Shuvah Yilod. Because again, everything we're talking about is Zohar versus the Keva, and the place of the Zohar as the Mashpia. And if you're stuck in Shuvah Tato, then Zohar, the Mashpia, which is Ratzin and desire and will, that's a terrible thing. That's a terrible thing. In Shuvah Tato, it's not a good thing. In Shuvah Tato, you would rather be a Lemel and passive and just be victim. Right? That's really what you want by Shuvah Tato. Shuvah Yiloh is about embracing the Kaykh of Zohar. But not in a way of tyranny, has shalom, in a way of, abu- of abusiveness. Ad Rabba, it means, let me listen to the beating of Sarah of the moment, of what this moment needs, and that's what I'm going to do to the Meshkir. So it's a, it's a healthy Shalom bias. But again, this Indian of Zohar and Keva, and this Indian of, of the, the Zohar's roles, these are even the Keva in terms of Hashkod, this is something that the world is struggling with, our maybe not, and, and I, I see this as, as, as just a, a, underdeveloped, immature, unripened, I guess you can say, an unripened energy of tshuva that is, that is flowing through the world. It's just, Kali Yisrael as the heart of the people, the heart of, the, of humanity, the heart of the world, have to be able to figure this out better. And this relationship of tshuva tov is tshuva love. And a person does go through these steps. In the beginning stages of tshuva, a person will, will feel a certain level of deflation in terms of their desires, and that's that's necessary. There's a certain weakness that sets in as a result of the initial stages of tshuva. But if you give it time, then it becomes strengthened, and you become actually more powerful as a result of it. Now take a look at, at, at Marmokka number two and Marmokka number three, and we're going to see this together. And it's everything we're talking about. This is an Arisa tshuva, again from our book. And Perak Tess is really the parak where he talks about the Indian of Shuva and desire in Ratzin and its relationship. These are two particular pieces from there. So, Paraktes uh, Aizvah. Yesh Chisarim v'tchunasa shal Tshuva hanemucha. There is a deficiency in the nature of lower Tshuva, of Tshuva Tato, of lower Tshuva. She mechaleshes es Ratzayna shal Adam, that it weakens a person's Ratzin, it weakens a person's desire. Upegemes v'zeh yish yusam, and it damages one's humanity. And specifically, one's masculinity, ish, uh, ish, it damages them. The chesarin, so, that, so that's a problem. But it, but it is a necessary thing. You, ha, you know, again, if a person, uh, the maisa, a person has to work on not saying lashonara. So, but a person wants to say lashonara. So you have to not want so much. It's a necessary component in the beginning. The chesarin and the smali, however, this deficiency will become full again, and it will fix itself. When Shuva fully ripens. When Shuva then unites with its higher form. Where the higher Shuva, the main intention is not the, it's a, it's a little mistake, it's not the breaking down of one's will and the breaking of one's individual strength. The higher level of tshuva, the goal over there is the strengthening of, of, of one's rotsin and the increase of one's value as an influencer. It's an amazing thing. Of course, Taich is this, the difference between two, two tshuva is the tshuva out of fear versus tshuva out of love, right? Tshuva out of fear corresponds to the lower level of tshuva. Where what? Where the, where the Gemara says at best, the aver which was done on purpose is now considered to be was done by accident. In other words, why is that? What's the difference between Mazin and Shaige? Your Ratsan. So the whole lower level of Shuva is what? Is to take away Ratsan. So if I take away Ratsan from my life, so the Rabbana Shemida Kenegin Mida, he'll take away the Ratsan from my Averis. And what remains? The Aver is still there, but at least now it's not the Ratsan, so it's Mashaige. But a higher level of Shuva is not about deflating the Ratsan, it's about Realigning the rutsin and adrabah, increasing the rutsin. 
So the day of the Avera itself, which is which was a moment that sort of released a certain level of strength and of tikkus, is is actually now a good thing. It's now being reharnessed as as developing a deeper sense of hashva. He says that we should rush on the He quotes a pasuk that when the Russia returns from his rishis, when the Russia does tshuva, the asa tzedakah mishpat he does tzedakah mishpat, alei mo yichid he lives from it. So it's not that it, it becomes a good thing. Take a look at Mar Machlon number three again. Also, a quote over there. Ayis Yud. Hatshuva the kol halichas hamaisiyus shalo. Tshuva with all of its practical halachas. You know, I did the Rambam and so on. Halacha is used to be in Maruah Chay Paris with the the essential spirit of tshuva. Shaletus beyama hamichad in the tshuva. Obviously, is the focus during the days of tshuva. So reading up Rosh Hashanah, it starts to make tshuva. Like this is the you know the, the the atmosphere that we're living in right now. Is an atmosphere of tshuva. In goydel ha te'elus shalal zakeiches and nefashes, with the great uh, uh, positive effect that tshuva can have to clean a neshama out. Ula adin and sarua, ula taris and meisim uchlarim. So, with as amazing as tshuva is during this time, with its ability to clean the neshama and to and to and to and to make a neshama more gentle and to purify one's actions, all the things that tshuva does. But it does, like a sponge, it does absorb within it a weakness. Even the strongest of people will not be able to escape a little weakness that actually sets into a person because of two. When you, when you are mekam, it's when you um, uh, squish and. Uh, Nicer word for squish. When you, when, you, when, you cons- when you contract and constrict uh, a rotsin, a person's will, which is what you have to do in your initial engagement with tshuva, is in other words, when you subjugate the strength of life, when you, when you push it down, right, in order to avoid doing averis, so you have to you have to want less. You have to be a little bit less. Powerful. So miskam is gamkin rotsin atoy. Then with that shrinking and with that subjugation comes also the shrinking of good desires. The oyz achayim atoyer and miskalish ramu and the strength of good holy and pure life also becomes weakened. Nimsa ha'adim slaving with the harasi hamusaris. So it comes out that a person in the process of tshuva we have no choice, but the process of tshuva makes it that a person is now dealing and suffering. With a similar type of weakness, like a person that's sick, we have to go through a certain uh, uh, um, you know healing process. Let's say through like some sort of electric shock. You know, early 90s, but uh, not not so much nowadays, I don't think. But uh, in those days, electric shock therapy or something like that. So, uh, yeah, let, let's assume it works, right? But it comes with a tremendous weakness, right? So it, it got rid of the of the venom of the poison, so to speak, that was causing the sickness. But it has the fact that it, it created a weakness in the healthy, uh, uh, you know, strength of, of, of healthy life that the person should have. So during so this kufa of El and Sarsin Shuva, where we're engaged in Shuva, we're thinking about Shuva. Obviously, it's a necessary thing. But we should know that it does create a weakness. It does create a weakness. Why? Because in that initial stage of tshuva, tatov, lower tshuva, it's about deflating one's power and one's and breaking of oneself. And there's a there's a weakness that sets in with that. Shavim al kin yom shal simchas kaidash. Says Rav Kook, and that's why the Rosh gives us sukkis after yom kippur. Because what's sukkis after yom kippur? It's also a part of the structure of tshuva. Shana Rav is also tshuva, right? But that's a different. That's called. Cool. That's where you get into tshuva law. That's called getting to higher tshuva of returning to the vigor and the rocks of life. Shavim alkin yom shal simchas kaidish. That's why after the times of tshuva, seriously tshuva and so on, then we transition into sukkis days of holy joy. Shal chedvas anefesh of times where the soul is able to be joyful and to be and to, and to express itself and to jump and to sing and to dance and to want l'koyim nesarots anatoy to uplift and to sort of resurrect. The the, the 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 a good healthy rotsin that a person should have. And then that completes the tshuva. 
So it's not, it's not uh, you know, I did tshuva, which means that I'm weaker as a person, and I feel more like a lemma. So I have to balance that with some strength. No, no. It's not just balancing. That's cool, taking the tshuva to the next level. Because again, this is the idea. The idea is that they have a, they have a, 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 a proper, again, the essence of tshuva is what we're saying. Is the essence of tshuva is to see yourself as coming from a higher place, not bound to a particular moment or a particular influence or a particular set of circumstances. I am being sent from a place that's above all of that to go into this place and Adarava to listen with a careful ear in terms of what the situation is that I'm in, but then to influence it and to make it better and to bring life into the situation. Now, in order to do that, though, I have to detether myself from, from the influences of this world, which initially require a certain, a certain level of, of uh, deflating of one's somehow uh, you know, bring up, conjure up a voice in my head which says, like, the world is not mine, you know. If the world is mine, then, you know, then why does that guy have that? Then I don't have it, you know. So there has to be a little bit to, to detach oneself from the things of this world that we find ourselves so enmeshed in. There has to be a little bit of a, of a, more than a little bit of humility and a sense of, like, okay, you know, this is not my place, whatever. But that initial, that initial stage is really just to detangle us from the craziness of this world. But then the idea is, okay, now that I'm not fully enmeshed in the silliness of this world, now I can fully then embrace my desire and my self and my purpose to then descend back into this place and to conquer it through their Shalom. And so Shuba moves from being something that weakens a person to become something that actually strengthens a person. And that's the transition from lower Shuba to higher Shuba. And so this is the avoid of this time of year. Again, like I said, Ikra Hachana to Aserus and Tshuva, which is the month of El, is to really realize this Sakud of like, and this is what I've been talking about for the past few weeks already, in, in many different ways, of that the essence of Chaydesh El and the Ikra Hachana to Tshuva is to reframe our way of thinking of who we are, where we come from, and, and what are we doing here. That, 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 that's, and that, that reframe of like, I'm not from this place, you know, like when it comes to sleep, it's like from Sfarim Ashkenaz, we talked about his Tasha's Rishon, that we come from a higher place, right? Or, you know, by the Thursday night of bringing, I was talking about this Indian of, of all my desires are coming from ultimately a memory that I had of what was before this world. This is an ikr of what shuva is, to, to reorient yourself as, as a, a being that's disconnected and detangled and not completely coming from the details of time itself and of this place. You're coming from somewhere else and you're being sent here to influence it. And by the way, the place that you've been sent to influence, like I mentioned on Shabbos Day, wants to be influenced. The Nikkei wants to have Shalom bias with his offer. You're not fighting it. Like I said, the Yud, right? The Yud is both the influence and the sphere that you're influencing within the Yad. And so it, it's a complete shifting of what uh, 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 of who we are and what we're doing here and where we are. That, that's the Ikrachana. And then when you have that, so then Shuva becomes much more uh, natural. It's much more natural. Your place in the world becomes much more, much more, under, uh, you know, uh, you can embrace it better. And that's something that Shuva is. Shuva, uh, the, the, uh, a similar though that a person doing Shuva properly is if they're becoming happier and happier and happier. They're becoming more depressed and more depressed and more depressed. Uh, you have to rethink the program a little bit. And you, you, might, you might not be uh, coming towards it in, in such a healthy way. So tshuva, like I said, tshuva tato comes with a certain sense of breaking of the will. But again, but if it's in a healthy way, then it eventually leads to a strengthening of the will, and that's a healthy thing. So tshuva shalom is when children's life we do tshuva shleim of the nafa in a way that what that it, that it gives us a sense of purpose and a sense of shlichus and a sense of and a sense of existence in the world. And with that, we should be to teach the whole world what the purpose is and what we're here for. And the world is not much open for it, they're ready for it. They want, the world wants to, wants to hear that, 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 uh, that its existence is not a bad thing. That's the world wants to hear. So if we believe that ourselves, and we'll be able to spread that word, and uh, the whole world, that itself is true. We should be to experience that. The Prophet Muhammad, the Yisrael said, that you may have remained on me.
Oh, I'm going to be a bone. Huh? Remember when he was speaking about the Shnei Yitzhak?